If you were floating in space, no one would be able to hear you whisper, talk, or even scream in horror at seeing a giant asteroid coming towards you. It's not only that you'd be far away from Earth, but sound needs space to travel through. Sounds are just vibrations of molecules and atoms in some medium like water or air. Your body will pick up sound waves through the ear canal and to the eardrum. Vibrations we receive then transform into electrical signals so our brain can understand and recognize them. Frequencies of sounds humans can hear are between 20 to 20,000 hertz. Sound travels four times faster in water because molecules are closer together than in air. Naturally, it travels faster through steel than both water and air. The loudest natural sound on our planet is one made by an erupting volcano. Not 100% certain, but scientists believe the eruption of Krakatoa in 1983 was probably the loudest sound humankind ever had the chance to hear. It exploded with enormous force, destroyed its island, and released 20 million tons of sulfur into the atmosphere. People even heard it 3,000 miles away. It would be like someone producing a sound in New York and people hearing it all the way in Ireland. Sound can take many forms, but humans are most familiar with it in the form of pressure waves that move through the air. Sound goes more slowly through heavy gases and colder air. It travels faster through lighter gases, for example, helium. There's no water or air in space, so the sound doesn't have anything to travel through. Our atmosphere consists of 10 trillion trillion atoms, which is like dense soup creating a way for sound to travel. And there are only 10 atoms per cubic meter up in space. That means space is empty and silent. But it wasn't always like that. The universe is 10 to 20 billion years old. It appeared as a result of the Big Bang. It wasn't an explosion that started from just one single point, but rather space appearing everywhere in the universe at the same time. Back then, the whole universe was like a hot ball of plasma. It was much thicker than today, so the sound could pass through it. As the universe was forming, it produced shock waves, and they, in return, produced a cosmic rumble, way deeper than things our ears can normally detect. These are the actual and the first sounds the universe ever produced, at the stage when it was still forming. Scientists decoded them and pitched them up to a version we can actually hear. As time went by, the universe was stretching. Today, it's a lot wider, emptier, and quieter. It's good for us, though. If sound traveled through space with ease, we would constantly hear loud explosions, crackles, moans, and other sounds space bodies make out there. The sun isn't silent either. Here's the sound of its vibrations created by its loops, waves, eruptions, and other activity. The sun creates trillions and trillions of watts of sound energy, something like pulsation, low heartbeat. It helps researchers discover what's going on inside of the sun and understand its layers. If it wasn't muted for us on Earth by a lack of air in space, it would be like hearing a jackhammer all the time. If you and your friend were taking a walk on the surface of the moon, you wouldn't be able to hear each other talk. No air, no sound. But that doesn't mean the moon itself doesn't produce any sound. When the first spacecraft landed on the moon, it caused crashes which later led to moonquakes. Scientists took a chance to measure vibrations going through the moon to figure out its internal structure. They realized they caused vibrations that lasted longer than they expected and longer than any similar vibrations on Earth. It was like those moonquakes were producing the sound of a ringing bell. When we have earthquakes, moisture in the ground acts like a sponge. It absorbs the energy of the waves spreading around until it ends their effects, which is why water eventually stops the earthquake. The moon is dry, more like a solid rock. Moonquakes are less intense, but there's no water to stop them, so vibrations just go back and forth through the moon. The solid rock stops them at some point, which is when the ringing stops too. Let's see what happens with the sound on different planets. 
Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn are mostly made of helium and hydrogen. These gases are way lighter than the atmosphere on our planet, so your voice there would generally come out in a higher pitch. But each planet has its layers that make differences in sound. Neptune has its murky depths, Uranus its methane clouds, but they're both freezing, made of gas, and have ice particles in their atmosphere. Saturn, also a gas giant, boasts wild, raging storms. Saturn's biggest moon, Titan, is the only one known for having a real atmosphere. It's thicker than the one we have on Earth. It's very cold there, and it rains liquid methane. In 2005, researchers sent the Huygens spacecraft that managed to record incredible audio you might find familiar. The sound of winds, but billions of miles away from us, on Titan itself. If you were there, you might even hear the sound that reminds you of a waterfall. In reality, it's flowing liquid methane. Moving to Jupiter, it doesn't have a solid surface either. It's made of gas that becomes denser the deeper you go. At some point, it even turns into a liquid. The sound is different in each of those layers. Jupiter is actually pretty noisy and has bizarre sounds. It creates intense radio storms with powerful lightning bolts. While there, you'd hear their echoes of echoes, just going back and forth. Mars, its atmosphere is way thinner than Earth's, which means there are not many molecules for sound to travel. Winds can get pretty fast, like our hurricanes, but on Mars, they would feel like a gentle breeze. You wouldn't necessarily hear the storm, though. You'd maybe hear the dust as it gets picked up and banged against your spacesuit. In the thin atmosphere, your voice would be much quieter, and it wouldn't travel far. Someone could be standing next to you and screaming, and you'd probably hear nothing. Low-density air actually makes our voices sound higher-pitched, but the cold temperatures, like on Mars, slow down the sound so it would balance out again. Your voice there would sound a bit distant and blurry. And imagine listening to an instrument like a guitar or piano there, like some muffled melody from a dream. Sound on Venus is kind of the opposite of Mars. Venus has a dense atmosphere, much denser than ours, something between water and air. There, you'd hear sounds like when you're underwater. The environment is a bit different with 900 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 tons of atmospheric pressure. But let's say you have a magical spacesuit that protects you from getting crushed or scorched. While on Venus, you'd hear thunder. 40 years ago, a spacecraft successfully landed on its surface and managed to go almost an hour before it shut down. It picked up these amazing sounds of strong winds. If you started talking on Venus, your voice would first hit the lower pitch because of the dense atmosphere. But it would then sound higher because hot air increases the speed of sound. It would be kind of distorted and muffled together with the sounds of thunder around you. Mercury is a rocky body with no atmosphere, so standing on its surface and talking would be like trying to talk while floating in space. Useless. Those are almost vacuum conditions, which would make you think Mercury has no sounds at all. Still, you can hear them, though not in the air. The rocks. Put your ear against the ground. Maybe a Mercury quake is coming. The universe is a place connected by light. Light can go anywhere from any spot in space, but not the sound. So not only do we have a planet that supports life, but offers a wide palette of sounds. Even without us, it wouldn't be a quiet spot. A light breeze gently caressing treetops, earthquakes, volcanoes, deserts. The ocean with its waves on the surface and scary sounds deep below. Up there, it's a quiet mystery. But down here, it's true magic.